And after spending nearly three decades in prison, Jerry Anderson, the man once known as the king of cocaine in Macon, is back on the streets. Former President Barack Obama commuted his sentence last year, along with more than 200 others, doing time for drug-related charges. As part of our 13 Investigates coverage on teen violence in Macon, Anderson agreed to sit down with our Caitlin Heck for his first interview to discuss how the drug and crime culture in Macon has changed since his days as a kingpin. Anderson also shared why he's using his new chance at life to keep children from ruining theirs. I sold it every day. The more I sold, the more money I made, the more I bought. I was making back then. Do I just want me to see how much I made back then? Back then, I was probably making about a, a million two hundred fifty thousand a week. Within about five years, Jerry Anderson had built quite the empire in the late 80s, selling cocaine throughout Macon and Central Georgia. I got 40 guys working for me. He was in his 20s with cars, clothes, extra money to spend on anything and anyone. Quite a different lifestyle for someone who grew up with hardly any food on the table. I grew up in Tender Height Project. It was hard. It was eight of us. My mama made nine. And the king of cocaine, as he was known, had no intention of stepping down from his throne. Back then, I was locked in on selling drugs. Cause nothing got me away. I had to go. I had to go to jail. That's the only way I could get right. And in 1991, that is exactly what happened. He was sentenced to life in prison. But I told myself when I was in prison, laying in my bed, I said it was a bad mistake. He didn't miss the life he had, but the one he could have had played out in his mind on repeat for almost 30 years. When I went to Knoxville College, I was playing football, but I left. A girl called me on the telephone. She said, Jerry, I'm pregnant. I need you to come home and help me. I didn't know I should have went to my coach and said he'd have got me a job, better some a night job. I didn't know that. I had a lot of pro scouts looking at me. I could have went to the NFL. Now a free man since December, he's just happy to score a paycheck. I don't never want to do the wrong thing no more. That's why I work at Purdue. Chicken hard. What? I get that check is the right thing to do. The right thing to do. Anderson's new focus because he sees now he's not the only one that had to pay for his bad decisions. I know a lot of parents because I back in the day I put a lot of them on the drugs and I see them now a lot of them still on the drugs now. So I fought myself for that. So that's why I said if any way I can help her kids or his kids then that's my job. I suppose to help them because I messed up their mom and dad. I apologize for that. And he wants to reach these teens before they deal their own dreams away. Leave the drugs alone because it's going to take it. You can't win. You ain't going to never win selling drugs. Anderson says teens now face more problems than he ever did. Gangs, new drugs, more guns, and fewer people and places to give them a way out. Because in the but two places to go. Prison or out to the cemetery. Which one you want to do? Oh, I take that back. It's the third place to go. Get you a job and do the right thing. He said the third option is the best option before you end up in the wrong place. He's been in the wrong place and hopes sharing his story will keep more teens away from the mistakes that he made. Now, he's been working with the Motivating Youth Foundation in Macon to talk with students about staying on the right path. He hopes to start speaking with other groups so more students can hear his message and learn from him his, his mistakes. And we have much more from our interview with Anderson, including his solutions for keeping teens away from violence. Just look for this story on our website, 13WMAZ.com.